Hi guys, um, yesterday or the day before I came across um, Lisa at Supportive Tarot, she's on YouTube, check her out, she's fab. I watched, I only found her like I said a day or two ago, I started watching her videos and um, I would have, uh, Jesus, I can't even talk, initially come across her through the Hermit's Cave. Um. And she has a series, Tarot Memoirs, and what she's doing, now I've only started, I've only watched the Fool card so far. Um, she does a video about the Fool card, and she's reading information from different books about the Fool card and giving her own thoughts on it. And then she tells you stories from her life um, based on the Fool card. And she did a hashtag, Tarot Memoirs. Now this video is from a year ago, and like I said, I only found her, so I... I'm starting it now with the fool card because listening to her story it occurred to me that my fool story card fool card story even uh, is not unlike hers and it's to do with my um, you know, relationship with my husband meeting him and getting together with him and stuff so I just want to show a fool card first this is from my new deck that I got last uh, Friday week ago I should say the Gilded Tarot Royale by Ciro Marchetti. Not sure if that's pronounced right, his name, but anyway. Um, so, my husband, um, before Czech Republic joined the EU, he was working in my hometown. Um, it's Cove in County Cork in Ireland, and it's a very touristy town. We have people from all over the world all year long in the town. So it's kind of freakishly quiet at the moment, but anyway. Um... But yeah, so he came over to work. He First he was in the Titanic restaurant in Cove um, the year before I met him. And then the year I met him, he was in the cafe restaurant that I was working in. Now at the time, his English was um, not very bad. He was just very shy because he, you know, didn't have 100% confidence in, in the English he had. So... He didn't talk to me much, you know, we just kind of worked around each other and every evening I'd ask him to join me and my friends for a drink and he kept saying no, he kept making up excuses. Um, And after the summer, uh, he was there for the summer and then he went home. But before he went home, my boss had a dinner party. So we went to the Titanic restaurant, she booked it for, I don't know, 10, 12 of us. We had dinner, we went downstairs, we had a few drinks in the bar. Um, it was packed, there was music playing and the whole lot. And one of the Czech girls that also worked there, who I'd become great friends with, kept talking to him in Czech and mentioning my name. And I didn't know what was going on. I mean, I kind of, you know, assumed. But I didn't know for sure. And after the bar, we went on to Pillars, which is a place where I was about five nights a week because they had pool tables. And myself and my cousin were big pool players um not sharks but we were trying to be you know we were we were practicing lots <laughs> that was our excuse so we took him there we played pool for a couple of hours and then he said he was going home because he was going the next day and he had to go and pack and all the rest of it and i remember him walking down the stairs in the bar to go out and my friends saying oh my god run after him run after him and I says, what's the point? He's going home tomorrow, you know. So I didn't. But I had gotten his email from him. Um, that was back in the day when, this was 2001 or two, uh, back in the day when people still printed photographs. So I had gotten his email address to keep in touch with him because I told him I was going to send him all the photographs that I'd taken that night. So he went home. I found out afterwards that he actually had collapsed somewhere in the town and was going home for a big operation. I didn't know that at the time. I think it was a few weeks or months later even that I that I found that out. But um, we kept in touch and I sent him an email asking for his home address. I said, I've photographs printed. I'm going to send them out to you. And I asked him what she had, Helena had been saying to him that night. My husband's name is Cam, by the way. Um... So he emailed me back, really nice email, and I actually printed it out and I have it somewhere safely. Don't know where it is, but it's around somewhere in a drawer or a box. Um, and he said, don't worry about Helena, what Helena was saying. I always thought there was something special about you, but 
you're there and I'm here. So, you know, it's nothing we can do about it, whatever. So I was like, oh my God, why did he bother saying that, you know? So I was going over and over it in my head, of course. He then, not long after, invited me out to the Czech Republic for his brother's wedding. Uh, I checked flights and, and kind of getting time off work and all the rest of it and it wasn't happening. It was too expensive because it was, I think it was June or July. It was summertime anyway. Um, and it was just too expensive. Wouldn't have gotten it off work. So I said, look, sorry, I can't. So not long after that, he came over back to Ireland instead. Um, myself and my cousin took him out and... Helen and the Czech girl because he was staying with his Czech friends in their house and when we walked them home at the end of the night I thought well you know after a few drinks I thought enough is enough grabbed him pulled him in and kissed him and he tells everyone to this day that I seduced him (laughs) so that's how we actually got together so for me First of all, that was one big fool moment because I wouldn't normally do that. Um, But a few days later, he went back to the Czech Republic. Sorry, her voice, her noises. Um, Not long after that, he again invited me out to the Czech. So... That was a big fool moment because I was thinking, okay, you know, we worked together, but we hardly spoke. He came over. I made the first move. uh, And now he's again asking me to go to the Czech Republic. So I, his friend Alex, uh, another Czech guy who was living here still at the time. uh, He was living with the bosses and working with them and all that still. So he said to me, look, I'll book the flights for you. Uh, I'm going home anyway. I'll go out with you and I'll make sure you get to him and all the rest of it. So I went out. Um, Cam met us at the airport. And we spent most of a week, I think, travelling around the northern half of Czech Republic. He was showing me all the places. We were going to all these amazing castles. I love castles. So we spent a night, you know, in each of these towns around northern Czech Republic. And then after a few days, we went down to his home city and I met all the family in that. Um, And I'll never forget being in the car and he driving me back to Prague and I was just so sad at the thought of leaving. But I came back and a few months later, I'm thinking three, four months later, I'm sure it was November, he decided to move over to Ireland. Actually, the week I was over there, I remember one night we were out in a village um, staying with his brother's wife's family Uh, went out to the only pub in the place because it was a proper village Um, had a few drinks came home and in our drunkenness he says to me so when are we going to start having babies and I thought oh my god (laughs) but that was a sure sign that that he was serious you know so I thought okay I'm going to have to start thinking about this properly now so yeah I came home uh, very sad and a few months later, I'm pretty sure it was November. Um, it would have been 2003, I'd imagine. And he moved over. I had found him somewhere to stay. There was a woman uh, renting out a room. And then the following April, so five months later, um, his friend Alex said, I'm looking to move out. I want to rent a house. Would you two consider sharing with me? So we moved in with Alex and then they found a third Czech fella. So there was me and three Czech fellas living in a house. That was that was two years, three months. And then we went off to the Czech Republic to get married. And obviously we'd gotten engaged and all that in, in, in the meantime. But I'll tell you that story in a minute. Uh, we went to Czech Republic to get married. And when we came home, the landlord had sold the house out from under us and gave us two weeks to get out so that was a whole other drama but anyway so that was a big fool moment in my life now what I want to show you and this is pretty awesome if I if I say so myself one night somewhere before we I think it was around the time 
that I grabbed him that first night that I grabbed him and kissed him. Um, I woke one night and I had all these. When, when I was in primary school, I was good at rhyming poems. And I woke one night with all these rhyming lines of a poem in my head about how we met. So, a few years back, for his birthday or our anniversary or something, I put together this photo book. And at this stage, I had written about, I would say, 20 verses of the poem. Um, so I put it into the book and there's photographs in between. So I'll give you a little look and I'm going to read the poem because it's really cool, even if I do, do say so myself. So, that's a wedding photograph. And then I have a couple of verses on one side and I have photographs on the other side. So that's just after we got engaged and there's photographs of me meeting the family and telling them we were engaged and all that. So I'll read the poem, right? Because it's really cool. So, from the first time I saw you in Seaview, Seaview was the restaurant we were working in, I knew you would one day be mine. But despite all my efforts to woo you, with me you never would dine. I began to realise you were quiet and maybe a little bit shy. And even though I couldn't get to know you, I knew you were a really good guy. After a few months, you went home and I began to worry and wonder. But you sent me a really sweet email and I knew our relationship would never flounder. We emailed and texted for six months until you told me you would visit for a week. And I knew it was now or never for a first kiss from you to sneak. After going out for pool and a few drinks, we decided to walk you two home. And it's because of our first kiss that night that I decided to write you this poem. We enjoyed the rest of the week and then you went back to Czech Republic. I made sure we would keep in contact because with you I knew I would stick. I decided to visit you in August. I was pretty close with the timing. So for two months I stayed in and saved money. I was nervous but excited because I had missed you so much. My darling, my sweetheart, my honey. We spent the week getting to know each other and visiting lots of cool places but I realised by the end of the week I would be sad leaving you and these new faces. I was so close to tears in the car on the way to Prague to fly home. Love songs playing on the radio didn't help. I was beginning to feel so alone. But two months later you made a decision and moved over here to be with me. I couldn't believe my luck. I love you my sexy baby. Then two years later I updated it. So far we've been together for two years and still I know you're the one. And though we've shared lots of tears, in the future we will have lots of fun. You're there for me day in and day out. Whenever I need you, you call. You tell me you love me every day. You pick me up when I fall. On Sunday the 25th of June 2006, after you came home early from work, I asked you if I could take you to the Chinese because I really did not want to cook. The place was full of English people from a boat who from drink were getting louder and louder. We decided to make a quick exit before they would get any rowdier. I lay on our bed watching telly. You knelt on the floor looking anxious. I kept telling you to be quiet and move out the way. I didn't realise your feelings could be crushed. You started to talk about our two years and about how much we love each other. And as you reached from a box, for a box from your pocket... I knew I would be nervous telling my mother. I was so happy I could not stop smiling and began to lose feeling in my jaw. And when you said, is that a yes or a no? I thought, shit, what will I tell Pa? Pa's my father. It's just a pet name that stuck from a programme they watched when we were young. The next day we went to Lisaniski, that's where I grew up, to tell them. I sat on the couch making jokes. Then out of the blue I said, look at me new ring. Burr stared open mouthed like she was on coke. Burr is my mother. And there's never been any drugs. It was just a rhyme. So now our day has finally come. And we're all here melting in the heat. And we have the rest of our lives together. And together we are really sweet. It's been years since I've added to this poem. So I figured I'd better update it. So much has happened in seven years. I really feel I should communicate it. We had a beautiful honeymoon and six years ago we had our little girl. Then in 2011 along came our little boy. It's really been such a swir whirl. Such a whirl. <laughs> um, and I'll just show you quickly. There's just, there's my two babies and their little cousin. But I have photographs in along the way.
is from our wedding. That was one of my little boy's birthday parties. Uh, my 30th. It was a selfie I took one time. That became a big hit on Facebook. It was a professional photograph of my kids when they were toddlers. They're 8 and 11 now. With a lot of attitude. That's first day at school. My little boy. My little girl. I'm going backwards now, obviously, in the book. That was the house when we bought it. We're still living in this house. And back to the start. So I put together that lovely book to remember all those memories. Um. So yeah, that's my hashtag tarot memoirs fool card story. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.